presentation, I'm going to be talking about civil disobedience and how civil disobedience is the most effective way to resist colonization because anyone can participate and it resists divide and conquer by bringing people together. I'll get into that more when I talk about my evidence, but for now, there's some important words that I want everybody to know. First off is divide and conquer. Divide and conquer is one of the four pillars, and basically what it means is that you separate people and make them compete. It's what colonizers did to control different places and populations. Exploitation is another pillar of colonization, and basically it's when colonizers use someone's labor or resources unfairly and they don't give them anything in return. So again, it's a way to control people. Another word that you'll be seeing coming up in my evidence is ideal. And an ideal is the best version of something, or a hope for the future. So now I'm going to show you my evidence and how it supports my argument for civil disobedience. So my first piece of evidence comes from the Ravonia trial. And the Ravonia trial was in 1964 when leaders of the anti-apartheid movement were arrested and sent to court. Nelson Mandela made an emotional speech which pushed people around the world to fight for the end of apartheid. So this is an example of civil disobedience because he's still going to court, right? He's still following what the law is saying in that way, um, and he's sharing an argument about why we need to end apartheid, which is the law in this case. So he said, I have cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve, but if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. This was a really powerful quote um, that showed people in like all over the world, not just in South Africa, that basically apartheid was not okay. So he was going to um, court because he broke the law and he was sharing this information so the whole world could hear. That's my first example. Next up is the minor strike. There were a lot of minor strikes starting in the 1940s um, and a lot especially in the 1980s. So let's read this context. Afrikaners exploited South Africa's land and labor ever since they found diamonds. Starting in the 1940s, miners resisted exploitation by going on strike. These strikes became larger and more common in the 1980s, right before the end of apartheid. So we can see that people were using civil disobedience. They were fighting against, in this case, the owners of the mines and saying, we're not going to be exploited. And you can see in this picture, there were a thousand workers on strike for just this one day. So you can see that people were coming together, everyone was participating, and they were fighting against the apartheid system. I also think it's important that this was happening in the 1980s, which is right before the end of apartheid, because that proves my point that civil disobedience helped to end apartheid and end colonization. Thanks for listening. That's my presentation.